Super Mario Maker 2 is fantastic. I feel like I keep repeating myself, but it's everything I ever wanted in my gaming life. Infinite Mario levels made by infinite people. It has on-off switches, it has icicles, it has seesaws, it has twisters, and I gave you tips on how to use those in a creative way. But today, oh, today we are tackling another new addition to this sequel, the Swinging Claws. Those babies can do so much stuff you won't believe your eyes. Hey, I'm Nico, and here are 10 creative ways of using the Swinging Claws in Super Mario Maker 2. Considering this is the fifth episode in this Mario Maker series, you're now familiar with the fact that you can use items to hide power-ups, instead of, you know, just putting them in a boring question block. Well, here's the thing, you can do exactly that with the Swinging Claw as well. If a Swinging Claw holds onto an item and you walk under it, it will drop the item and give it to you. And while this is cool in itself, what if you put the claw on a rail and force it to grab the power up first, then you'd have to wait for it to bring it and drop it to you. Kinda like a crane game in a way. You could even add more claws, some conveyor belts, some falling icicles, an on-off switch. Combining items is what makes Mario Maker 2 such a powerful tool, so never be afraid to try out new new stuff. With vertical levels being a thing in Super Mario Maker 2, we now have to come up with creative ways of going up a very long vertical pathways. Platforms? Pfft, they fall down, so unreliable. Slopes? Pfft, unoriginal and gross. Swinging claws? Oh, now you're talking! The cool thing about the swinging claws is that you can really get some speed by swinging left and right, and you can go really far, even if the jump seems impossible at first. Knowing that, you can now make a very scary level where you have to go up using those things, and where falling down would mean you had to try to get to another claw to grab you back before falling all the way back down to the beginning of the level. You can even combine the claws with other hazards and gizmos, punishing players that don't take their time and analyze your whole level. Don't forget to use them in your low gravity levels too, as they are super well fitted for those types of levels. Not only can the claws be used to give you an item, you can also give it back to them. <laughs> That's right, if you grab an item like a POW block, you can actually throw it into a claw and it will grab it for you. Why would you want to do that, you might ask? Well, to create a bridge that Mario could walk on. As cool and exciting as swinging claws can be, they still have their limits. But try putting a trampoline on a claw, and there you go, you can bounce up there and solve your problem. Well, you know, while we're on the topic of using claws to do some platforming without actually swinging into those claws, did you know that you can place pretty much any enemy inside a claw and the claw will hold onto it? And as we all know, Mario gets sent flying higher if he jumps on an enemy, so you could place a couple of Goombas or Koopas and jump from crane to crane. Or if you want to make this thing extra crispy, you could also place some spike tops, forcing Mario to do a spin jump in order to get to the next crane. Combine this with twomps and other hazards and it would be amazing. <laughs> So, one of my favorite things to do in Super Mario Maker 2 is to use bombs to break some walls. I put a giant wall so the level stops scrolling, and then the player has to break some blocks to get to the next area. But sometimes I put the breakable blocks higher, forcing the player to grab onto the bomb and then jump and throw it at the perfect moment to break them. But what if grabbing the bomb is out of the question? For example, if you are using the Super Mario Bros. 1 theme, then you need a way of getting that bubum up there. Hmm, of course the swinging claw is the perfect thing for that. You can jump on a bubum to then kick it inside of that claw and wait for it to slowly bring it up and boom, the wall is now open. 
Combining claws with rails is pretty fun, but have you ever thought of adding more claws and more rails? Here's the thing, not only can you jump up a swinging claw by pressing the jump button, if you're also holding down on the d-pad, you can just let go of it. So now put three claws on three rails going at the same speed and put some obstacles in between them such as spikes, enemies, lava bubbles and so on and you'll have the perfect level where you have to jump from claw to claw while being on rails. I have seen this concept being used with some lifts and lava lifts but never before with claws. Hey, guess I had to be the one with that 200 IQ big brain idea. I'm sure someone already had this idea before me. I don't have a big brain, okay? It was just a joke. So far, Mario climbing on a claw wasn't really dangerous or anything. But what if you had to get on the claw, but leaving it was actually the tough part? Here's my next idea. Put two rails on top of each other and on one of them put the claw and right on top of it put a chain chomp. Whew. With that contraption the chain chomp will actually never be long enough to eat Mario while he's on the claw. But if Mario's trying to swing or exit the claw by jumping, well then it becomes a whole other story. Claws seem so safe, so why not make them a little bit more interesting by adding some hazards over them? Oh, you know what? How about adding some hazards under them, like a muncher down below? Oh, okay, now this doesn't make me feel that good. Poor Mario, I actually feel bad for the guy now. From what we've seen so far, the swing claw is a pretty nice thing and you always want to use it, right? Well, that's not exactly the case. Swinging claws grab onto anything that stands in their path, whether it's an enemy, an item, or Mario himself. Now take a look at this. You want to go up the vine without moving too far to the left or to the right or else you're toasted. It's easy, right? Well, yes, it kind of is. Now, what if I add a couple of rails and a couple of, you guessed it, swinging claws? Oh. Oh, it's not that easy anymore. Yup, you can actually use the claws as enemies that you have to avoid. I made this vine level featuring tons of swinging claws going in all direction that you absolutely have to avoid if you want to climb up there. It is a super simple level to build, but it's not easy at all, trust me. In this series, we have used the on-off switches to create a trap which, upon being activated, drops evil enemies on you. We also did a similar thing with falling icicles. Well, what if I told you that out-of-screen swinging claws can also be used to drop unexpected things on Mario's head? Remember how the claw will drop whatever it holds onto as soon as you go under it. Well, what if that thing was holding a lava bubble? Or even worse, it could be holding the mad lad himself. Think about it, you'd be running super fast and all of a sudden, boom boom joins the battle. You could even have a wall made out of munchers and you think there's nothing you can do, but all of a sudden, you jump and a power block falls off the sky. Placing swinging claws outside of the screen and putting some items or hazards into them is very smart. You can also combine this with rails for a little bit more randomness in the fireball rain, for example. Who doesn't love a little lay epic troll in their levels from time to time? I was looking for more ways to use the claws to make a vertical level difficult without involving rails and I think I finally found the perfect contraption for epic vertical spooky jumps. Here's what you need, put an icicle and then a saw on top of a swinging claw and you'll get this weird scary looking thing. But here's the best thing, as scary as it looks, it's actually not that spooky. You can swing left and right without any fear of touching the saw, but then you have to swing very fast to jump on top and reach the icicle platform. This scary platform thing is perfect for vertical level climbing, simply because it also acts as an anti-cheat. 
if you mess up your jump, the clouds underneath you won't catch you and won't allow you to try again. You will actually get destroyed by the saw. Yeah, this might be a little bit evil, but it's a good idea for vertical platforms that are actually threatening. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. I hope I gave you some cool ideas. Make sure to subscribe and to hit the notification bell, and you can also like the video if you enjoyed it. Tap the cards on screen if you want to watch more videos in this series, and if you want to have your name in the credit card like those guys over there, hit the join button or click the link in the description. It helps support the show and it gives you pretty cool stuff. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next one.